sometimes. Uh, we we want we plan on covering here on the podcast basically everything weird. So, uh, you know, hauntings and all that stuff, from all the way to UFOs, which is like a personal like favorite topic of mine. That that's a that's a deep into. rabbit hole, my dude. That dude, is... you don't even. I read a book in high school talking about the alien beings uh, that don't come from space but come from an alternate dimension. That's and a big. Like, that's like a big. That's like. 40% of the whole alien... Yeah, it is! Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. I, we, that's what's jumping ahead of ourselves. We'll get there at some point uh, when, when we talk about it, but for the uh, inaugural episode, I figured it'd be, it'd be a good idea to do something that maybe something everybody's heard of, or at least in passing via books or movies, uh, and to talk about kind of the legend behind it and then what the truth behind it is, and that is the Amityville Horror. The haunting that happened in 1975 in Amityville, uh, which was preceded by a pretty mass murder in the house. Uh, it's also, I think, coincidentally, where we first get introduced to famed or infamous paranormal investigators, the Warrens, who are kind of behind a lot of of weirdly hoax-ish hauntings that they've made a lot of money off of. Yeah, is there um, is there like a movie about them or something like that? This that is such a like interesting story. Those guys. I don't know if there's a movie about them in particular, but they're in a what was lot the movies of movies that came out recently. That was like um, Annabelle about. Yeah, there was the Paranormal Investigators, and they had a sequel they were, where they were in England, too. Yeah, so so actually, that's fun, because the England one is actually based off of a real haunting called the Enfield Poltergeist, um, which, unlike Amityville, is way more credible. Uh, and the Warrens were only there for a day uh, in real life, but for some reason in the movie, uh, they're there the whole time. <laughs> but that, that's, that's not how it actually that's went the down. Sequel to so Annabelle? the Warrens are the people in these movies? Yeah, the Warrens are the paranormal investigators being represented. It's a, it's a husband and wife duo that, that's made a butt ton of money off of going to haunted places and basically being like, they're haunted! Are they and, still alive? Yeah, they're still alive. They have like a museum and a website and oh all this other stuff. God. Of which, their website looks like it's straight out of 1995. That Space Jam look. It's awful. It's like GeoCities style website. Something I would have whipped together back in the early 2000s when I was Wait, like, whoa, whoa, there's a real Annabelle timeout. Yes, yes. There's a real Annabelle doll that they have in their possession. It is at the Warren's Occult Museum yep. in Monroe, Connecticut. Yep. All right. Which is right near me, actually. Timeout. First off, they say it's a Raggedy Ann doll, which yep. is hilarious. Yep. But secondly, if this is a paranormally possessed evil doll that tries to kill you, <laughs> yeah, why are they like, yeah, throw it in our house museum? <laughs> Listen, man, they've got it in a plas or a glass case. It can't escape. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Unless they learn how to open doors. <laughs> <laughs> oh which, <my> God. <laughs> according to some hauntings. It happens all the time. There's another um, haunted doll that I can't remember his name. Um, it's like Ricky or Rich or some weird name. Chucky. Um, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Chucky. <laughs> but there's another one that, like, apparently, if you see, he's being held in some museum, and in order to take a picture or videotape him, you have to ask for his permission first. And if you don't, he'll haunt you forever. Does he go like, okay? <laughs> I don't know. I think you have to just like you may. ask him. Yes, you may. <laughs> and how does he haunt you? Is like just bad things happen? Uh, like he just like in your house, doors open and close. So bad luck is a haunting. I, listen, there's the rules for hauntings don't make sense. Listen, I'm just putting it out there. I, I agreed. That's a whole like that's a whole another rabbit hole that we can get down at some point. The only rabbit hole we're gonna go on today though is the Amityville Horror rabbit hole, which is a surprisingly deep rabbit hole. But not for the reasons you would expect. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the legend of Amityville. Uh, what we know what happened and then the following hauntings that were kind of uh, reported by the family that moved in thereafter. Uh, and then we're going to go through the haunting and see and talk about kind of the truth behind it all. Because, spoilers, if you've done any research on Am Amityville, it's one of the biggest hoaxes known to man. And it is one of the funniest hoaxes. It's no crazy. I mean, like, it is. It's a mix of, it's a mix of so many, I, I always hear different parts of this story, and I'm like, what story is that? And then it's like, oh, it's, it's Amityville again. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, one of the things that we're going to get into as well is that when the Amityville thing happened, or when when the hauntings came out, this is also during a time where the Exorcist had ju just come out and was causing a fever pitch <clears throat> among the people who loved ghost stories, and a lot of the claims sound very similar to the movie. 
Yeah, uh, yeah. Dad, my dad uh, used to talk about how that movie like blew his mind. He always like yeah. that's like one of his big stories. <laughs> one of the greatest movie horror movies to ever exist. Yeah, it was it was really but, um, popular as like in the like general consciousness too, right? Like everybody was talking yeah. about this. Everybody was talking about it, and it was one of the big reasons Amityville got so popular too. Which again we'll talk about because it happened shortly after Exorcist had been around, so there was that, like I said, that fever pitch that kind of created this perfect storm for this family to maybe, maybe not make a ton of money scamming the shit out of people. Anyway, uh, let's get into the facts of it, uh, and, and again, warning, this is going to be getting into some semi-dark stuff, so if you're not in, you know, into that, I mean, that's what this podcast is going to be about. So <laughs> The and just film is the called The Amityville Horror. Get out now if you're going to be upset. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just throwing it out there, man. Just throwing it out there. All right. Let's start with some facts. Starting with 6.30 p.m. on November 13th in 1974, a man by the name of Ron DeFeo entered Henry's Bar in Amityville, shouting to everybody nearby, You gotta help me! I think my mother and father gun done been shot! <laughs> Gun to say when I said that's exactly how he said it. Is that an Amityville accent? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Is it? I don't think it is, but it is now. Why not? Oh, gee, you little curse! They don't bun shot. They done okay. bun shot. They done been shot. <laughs> so then, DeFeo and a small group of people from the bar went to his home, the now legendary 112 Ocean Avenue, which later would be renamed 108 Ocean Avenue from people who moved in after because they, they wanted, wanted to change, change the number. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Uh, which was located near the bar, and found that DeFeo's parents and family were indeed all shot dead. Face Whoa. down in their beds. <clears throat> One of the group, uh, DeFeo's friend Joe Yeswit, made an emergency call to the police, who searched the house and found that all six members of the same family were dead in their beds, shot in the head. Damn. We know that that's true. That actually happened. That is... Uh, he shouting like, my family's been shot. Shortly after that, the police came by uh, and actually took uh, DeFeo into, into custody to keep him safe. Uh, DeFeo claimed that it was an act of a hitman from the mob, which we can, we'll talk about later about why he's claiming a mob hitman came and shot them all. Uh, and so the police took him into the police station to keep him safe. While he was there though and asking him what happened, it was really quickly apparent that his story couldn't stay consistent. And he uh, was shortly thereafter locked up after confessing that he was the one who shot them all, but his excuse uh, was that a demon, demonic voice had told him to do it, and that once he started, or in his words, once I started, I just couldn't stop. It went so fast. It done bun went so fast. <laughs> <laughs> it done been gone done so fast. <laughs> Uh, uh, the Amityville house saw the, the mass murder using a 35 Marlin rifle, uh, is what he used to murder his entire family while they were asleep, which included his four siblings and his parents. 23 years old? Holy shit. At 23 shoot. years old. Yeah. Wow. Um, now, it, it is important to note, which we could talk about later, that DeFeo, uh, Ron DeFeo was also known to use LSD and heroin pretty regularly. Um, well, there's a culprit. <laughs> LSD pretty regularly? I guess so. That, that's uh, he was, He's known to imbibe heroin and LSD, which may or may not lead to the quote-unquote voices he may have been hearing. What I don't know. World? I've never done LSD or heroin, so I can't yeah, tell I you. Can't, that's... I, can't, I can't report back from that. I, I, got, nothing, <laughs> I got no experience there. <laughs> um, he claimed that voices had been telling him to commit the atrocious acts while he was downstairs in his basement watching a movie but over time in prison his story has changed many 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 times however a little over a year after the murders were committed on january 19th 1975 the lutz family moved in and got a really really good deal on that house so did they know yes they did know. they were like we're gonna move into this like multiple murder lsd demon house Yes, that we are there. They they knew from the start that this was a a murder place, which is why they got it on the cheap, um, because it it was the site of a grisly murder. Um, and they all and they basically they they talked to each other. The family talked to each other and agreed that they could handle it and that it would be fine. And it was a really good deal. And they all moved in uh, a little over a year later on January nineteenth, nineteen seventy five. So a year and like two months, almost to the day. Uh, 
they moved in. And that's where the haunting begins. Now, it's important to note that the Lutz has actually only lived in that house just under uh, just under a month. Like, they, for, it was they like, showed quick. up and they were like, no. It was December 19th, by the way. Sorry, not January 19th. But they lived there for just under a month uh, from December 19th to January 14th. And then they, they moved out immediately, Whoa. leaving everything that they owned behind and had um, movers come pick it up the next day. Okay. So they only were there for about a month. So their claims. Do we know? Do we know? Going back to the to the DeFeo yes. murders. Yes. Before we get into like the crazy. The stuff, crazy shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we know why he shot? shot his entire family besides the voices have there ever been was there any sign of like there were issues with his parents or he besides drug heavy drug use <laughs> was because there's so, a lot of things here that don't make sense to me and i'm really it seems like none of this makes sense like he has a gun that is very loud that is a loud right gun. so that's actually something we're, we can get into if you want to do that now is, uh, yeah, like, why is everyone face down the bed? Were they moved face down the bed? They right. Don't... So here's the thing. The the thing is, you can't get a straight story out of DeFeo. He, once he was in prison, his story changed to, like, nine... I think the, the actual count is nine different stories he's told as to why he did it and how he did it. Um, everything from voices that he heard, which... Uh, surprise, surprise, was the main reason uh, he got the insanity plea that he That's was exactly what I was going to say, is did he talk yeah. to a lawyer before or after he said he started hearing voices? Because if, I, yeah, if so, I murdered my whole family, I would be like, how can I get out of this? And I can imagine a lawyer just being like, just act crazy. Sorry. Right. And, and, and he did. Um, and, and that was, he actually did get the insanity plea. He got that. He got charged for second degree murder, uh, was put into an institution for 25 years to life. He'll, he'll never be out of there. I think he's in, uh, life. Uh, and he never got out. Now, the thing is, the stories are, are all over the place. So, obviously, we have the de demon voice telling him to murder things. Um, there's also the story that he and his sister did it together. That his sister was super pissed uh, at her parents for not letting her move out and move in with her boyfriend. So, one night while they were drinking in the basement, came up with a plan to kill the whole family. And you make a good point, too, Jesse, is that that gun that he used is incredibly loud. So loud that it should be able to be heard many, many blocks away. But nobody heard anything and um one of the one of the things that he said or they, the people paranormal investigators who believe the story say is the reason nobody heard anything is because demonic energies st st stifled the noises of the gun demonic silencer moved. yeah like a demonic like a, like a possessed silencer satan was like Shh. <laughs> i get to see like fire poofs up and satan steps out and he's like all right i brought you a silencer Stab at them, DeFeo. <laughs> no, I want to use my gun. Oh, <laughs> fine. Let me get my silencer. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it says here, um, I'm reading into it. It yep. says here that uh, Don, Don, yeah, his sister, sister mm -hmm. wanted to kill the parents because they wouldn't. Yeah, you're Maybe right. Maybe they were just the mad because thing. their names were Ron and Don, and that's like really annoying. <laughs> And so apparently, she killed the kids, and yep. he was furious, so he killed her? Yes. So the story is, he killed the parents, she killed the kids, he was mad that he she killed the kids, so then she, he shot her. And there was there's also evidence with the bodies as well that some of them were awake when they were shot, um, that there was like a, like a movement or a struggle, and the bodies were moved after they were shot to be put in the bed to make it look like they were all asleep. All right, that makes more sense then. I, yeah, okay, all yep. right. I believe, I believe these two were probably crazy really fast. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 But there's also the the reason the mob was brought up is because his grandfather is was actually part of the mob, um, and what? Again, supposedly, uh, this is another story is that the reason he went to jail and he's the only one taking the rap is because his grandfather apparently knew that he and his sister were having some incestuous relationships and that couldn't get out and tarnish his name in the mob. So he was like, "You're going to prison." You know, we're putting this on you. It doesn't matter. You're going away. And that doesn't it seem more likely than putting all these stories together? Right. If I had to take a crazy wild <laughs> guess, he probably was. Don't you think it could have been like he was definitely banging his sister? 
And then she was like, I want to move my boyfriend, wink. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say definitely. Like, the parents were like, no. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't definitely say definitely. Banging his sister. 100% banging his sister. And then, and then she was like, I want to move my boyfriend, wink. And he's like, yeah, I'll help you move your boyfriend. The parents are like, yeah. you are the worst. Stop it. You're on drugs and you're creepy. Nah. And then she's like, if I can't be in love with my brother, I'm going to kill my parents. And he's like, I'll help you, acid. And then, <laughs> well, I was going to say, he's like, I'll help you. Hang on. Let me go take my Satan talking juice. Let me just talk to the devil yeah, real quick. Let me go and get then, my demonic and then they silencer. Go. <laughs> and then because he's caught up in the whole thing, she's really the crazy one. She's like, uh, we're going to do this. She she kills the kids too because she's like no witnesses and he's like what you do oh no <laughs> and so he kills her I can imagine she's like grandpa's in the mob grandpa's in the mob Ronnie no witnesses you heard him say it before <laughs> remember I'm just remember saying remember when you said you I, got I Jesse on the show because he was the skeptic <laughs> well, yeah. that were like hot taking like step by step <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I, there's got to be a logical reason, even though my reasons are insane. There's got to be a logical, like, it's Sherlockian reason for this. Like, there's a simple answer Occam's here. Razor. And it Occam's is, Razor. Maybe yeah. he's schizophrenic. Right, I, that's no, also exactly. possible, yeah. That's, uh, that right. just happened with that Slenderman girl. She just got, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. She just got sentenced to 40 years in a mental institution because she heard, she, like, talked to Slenderman and he was like, you have to kill to like get into Come the Slender mansion. mansion. Yeah, <laughs> the go watch that documentary. Mansion. That documentary is fascinating. That is some crazy shit. But like, yeah, yeah. The, the, it's idea, the idea that these these two girls found each other and they both fed off each other's like own neuroses. Yeah, to the point where they're like, yeah, this this it, it's crazy because they even they say it. We learned it on this page called Creepy Pasta. Yeah, and we know it's an internet story. But we don't want Slenderman to kill us. Like they know it's not real, but at the same time, don't yeah, know. Yeah, but it's once not real. once it's once one of them is schizophrenic, like it, you know, it it stops being just fake. Like she kind of like also it's real a little bit because she's actually talking to and seeing Slenderman. You know, right? right. Oh, it's yeah. it's it's a fascinating look at at. When you learn about the parents, you learn about their history yeah. with mental illness, and you're like, wow, this is, it's incredible. And the fact that the little girl survived, definitely go, it's on Netflix, go watch it. No, yeah. it's, it's HBO, it's HBO, HBO, yeah, yeah. HBO. But, yeah. yeah, go watch it on there, it's great. But, like, and I, I can see it thing, being like, real up to, I could see it all being real up to, like, I don't know about the hauntings, but, like, I could see it just being, like, I heard voices, I couldn't stop once I started killing yeah. everybody. I could see it. Yeah, I, I can too. I can definitely see it. And, and again, we're going to get into the hauntings here momentarily. Like, every while there are a lot of haunting stuff out there that I, were, I, would, I would love to cover that's way more believable and, and has way more evidence, um, this is one of the ones that has a tragic story behind it and then gets into, like, silly Hollywood nonsense movie haunting stuff that the, that the Lutzes claim, um, <laughs> which, which we can get into, like, right now. So... The Lutzes move in in uh, in, in uh, December 19th, 1975. Uh, they're there for just under a month before they move out, claiming that the place is horrendously haunted, that the, a lot of people have claimed that Amityville is like a gateway to hell because of the horrible things that happened in that house. Um, and when they moved in, they say immediately weird things started happening. Like day one, day two after moving in, uh, him, his wife, and his two children, had, or, or three children rather, had weird things happening to them. Um, simple things like that's typical haunting stuff like they claim that they would have a fire burning day in and day out because of how cold the house was that no matter what they did the house stayed ice cold and they could not bring the temperature up uh, the garage door would open and shut on its own uh, a, a, a knife now I tried oh, to question question yeah, question yeah question, yeah, question. yeah go right ahead um where did this take place where's Amityville Amityville is I want to say New England I'll double check real quick because that's something I just check. I mean and when do they move in they, 1975. One year, like, Janu one year later. January? Long Island, no, December. Long Island, New York. Yeah. And they moved in December, because uh, I, I wrote it down wrong. They moved in December 19th, 1975. And how old is this house? Well, they had the house, uh, the, the uh, DeFeo family had the house since 1965. They were living there for almost 10 years before the murders happened. And the house existed before 1965? It definitely uh, it looks like, from what I've seen of it, it looks older, but I don't know how much the one that I've seen is, like, conflated with, like, a movie version. 
Yeah. There's like true. Just, um, just putting this out there. Just just uh, putting this out there. Uh, it was new in 1965. Oh, okay. It was a new 1965. Yeah, wow. that's what I'm All looking right. at. Yeah. I'm just putting this out there. 